Hey, this is really, really amazing. I want to welcome all my audience, those watching from YouTube, those watching on Married Life Management Community, on Married Life page. I'm grateful to have you guys here. So I have an amazing guest today. She's an amazing woman, as you can see. Please, can we just let this incredible and amazing woman introduce herself? How are you feeling today, amazing woman? <laughs> I'm simply Mrs. Chinda. I'm Chinda Chinda, wife of Mr. Chinda. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So for those that are watching, please just, if you don't mind, just tell us where you're watching from. And also if you're commenting on Facebook or YouTube or whichever channel that you're uh this is coming to you we are very grateful to have you today and uh we believe that you know what we're going to share here we're just going to be real we're just going to be practical about our discussion today so please just tell us where you are watching from uh just tell us where you're watching from and please i would like you to comment as well give us some hearts some love because i've got an, an amazing guest okay thumbs up i've got an amazing guest today her name is mrs chimsey chinda the woman that stole my heart and the woman that i want the love for the rest of my life the queen of my life my world an amazing 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 woman so please just tell me where you are calling where you are watching from and also uh, if you don't mind also comment as well as this goes on thank you so much someone has just given us a hat okay amazing amazing so today we're going to be looking at something really really amazing but first let me just ask my wife and my beautiful uh, lady my love <laughs> How are you feeling to be on this show today? I'm feeling great and particularly delighted with the 2020 conference coming up. So I'm pumped up, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> You're pumped up. She's pumped up and she's ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. So before we talk about that, um, I think it would be nice to just uh, discuss this actually okay it would be nice to just talk about um, this um because i believe that um we are connected and, and i'm passionately connected to you and you know that yeah, you're not going anywhere you know that's just the reality of connected to you <laughs> okay so we want to talk about the secret of a connected spouse the secret of a connected spouse and the reason why i just wanted us just to talk about this uh, is just to talk thank you so much someone is watching from abuja someone is watching from ghana glory Kofa. thank you so much happy Banyahu from thank you so much uh guys i'm so grateful you guys are joining us today so i just want to just give a bit of a background of what we're talking about today and why did we decide to talk about connected spouse because I realized that a lot of spouse, when they are in their early stage of their relationship, when they are in the early stage of marriage, they are always really, really uh, into one another. They are connected. They are excited. And I just want to ask, you know, my love, I mean, why, why is it like that from the beginning? Yeah, if we know, you know, the honeymoon phase, the hormones are kicking and anything new, it's, it's like when you're starting a new job, the first day you're all suited and booted and raring to go. But day two, no more day two, day two is too quick. Um, one week, let me give you like one month into the job, I am like, to wake up by 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. is just a struggle. I think the same thing applies to marriage as well. That initial boost of energy is always there. But what happens afterwards or what will help a long-lasting marriage is a different ball game. it's a different um, scenario, or so it's a different tactics to use in accomplishing that long-term goal. Right. So just for the sake of my viewers, you know, when we got married initially, were you excited? Did you also have the hormone stuff as well? <laughs> even even meeting a potential spouse is, is you know, the joy. You're literally you're you're out of your body if I'm putting you in another world. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. You want to hear your love's voice like 24-7. You, you 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 can basically you may think you just hear his voice even if you're not feeling well you just get back in the middle 
So, yeah. <laughs> Same thing happens with the as well, I think. Not okay. Happens. Right. Okay. So now we're just going to be a bit real here. I'm very practical as well in relationship because we're talking about connected couples. Now, when we started, you know, we we're really connected with each other. Okay. And we wanted to hear each other's voices and all that. And, it, and it, when we got married as well, the honeymoon phase. Today, we are, I mean, 12 years into this marriage last month 11th was our anniversary okay and now we're 12 years into the marriage uh, can you say that you know we are still connected we are still in love and we're still having those you know, good simple stuff of course and it's a different level can't you see how i'm smiling it's a different level and it's a different understanding so we move from stage one i think the stage one is like that one year two year we've gone on to stage two which is five years six years then I think stage three, I don't know if it's stage two, but maybe we're in stage two, whichever. But you grow in love, you grow in understanding your spouse. And especially if the both spouse are open to learn. And that's when any growth, any changes can occur. But if it's just one person stagnant and the other person is trying to grow, then I won't be smiling the way I'm smiling now. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so which means um our our hormones are still there and they are active the hormones are obviously different from when you were the one year two but the hormones are full there and active but even in a better mature level yeah. okay right okay so so now if he because like i said i wanted to make this thing very practical okay and i would like my viewers as well if you're watching from youtube thank you so much i might not see you those watching from married life community and those watching from the open page or from my private page please i would like you to be commenting as well give us some hearts you know ask your questions as well as we discuss this because i just want this to be very interactive and very practical and um, we'll be able to respond to you because this is for you and just to get a little bit into the behind the scene of Mr. and Mrs. Pinder's uh, connected life, okay? So we're looking at the secret of connected couple. Now, at the beginning, when we we started, we are like friends, okay? Because friends attract uh, each other, you know, you grow in friendship. Now, what has helped us to continue to remain friends for 12 years and continue to be in love and continue to be into each other and we continue to be very passionate? With the way we treat each other. So, what do you think you know has helped us? Yeah, I think one of the things that has helped us is, and I keep telling people that our friends or people we've come across it when they ask the question of our longevity or how we like a question you you raise, how did we stay connected? It's tolerance. It's a big letter T. Like I was speaking to you, so tolerance. We now, as we moved on from the initial honeymoon phase, we are now, our individuality is there to, you know, we said to get basically no one another better. We know each other's likes, dislikes, your passion. So to be able to tolerate one another and allow each other to shine, tolerate each other and ensure that even if, even if um, I like this, my partner likes this, we can still you know, work together to ensure that there's no friction. So you, there are some weaknesses in my, my life and there's some weaknesses in your life. It's like where we read, read, read from the Bible this morning, where the, the servant that had 100 talents was owing the master, I think, let's say 100,000 talents, and he grabbed the one owing him 100 talents and said, pay me my money. When the master had it, he said, I allowed you go for this certain amount of money, this huge amount of money. Why can't you let the, the other person go? So it's the same thing. It applies to marriage as well. So you have your own weakness. I have my own weakness. Why, why bog down on the other person's weakness when you have your own? And I think we've come to that understanding that like, you do you, me do me, and in the end, we still work together and understand that this is my wife, this is my husband. We love each other so much. So allowing each other to be themselves and align. Yes, you work on your weaknesses, but knowing that we are all, we all have 
fault because some people have this expected um, expectations for their spouses, either wife or husband or any relationship. They have this expectation. So if people don't meet up their expectation, they get all cross and wound up and angry and upset. Well, when you look at it on the flip side, they are not also meeting the expectations of their partner. So people getting that understanding, then your marriage is going to work and you will stay connected because, yeah, I'm also... Wow. You know, uh, just looking at my audience, just to understand that, yeah, it's, it's this what you're getting here is real stuff, okay? There's no editing anything, it's real. Tolerance is the willingness and the ability to withstand something that you're not comfortable with sometimes. Now, as long as those things are not harmful, you know what I mean? They are not deadly, they are not causing serious harm to you or clear abuse into the relationship. Because if there is anything like that, well, it's going to be a different conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but we're talking about things that, you know, is not a, a, a deal breaker in your marriage, a deal breaker in your relationship. Understanding that we are, we have our own uh, unique weaknesses and strength and understanding that this other person as well has, has something to offer to the relationship, to the marriage, because everybody has got a strength that we should all look forward to. You know, everyone that comes into your marriage has got something to offer. But where you are not able to synergize, right? You're not able to synchronize your strengths and weaknesses in order to help your relationship work. Then you begin to lose that connection. You begin to lose that intimacy. You begin to lose that thing, that, that bond that kept you guys together. So in our own marriage, our relationship, you know, we understand ourselves. You know, my, um, I'm sanguine, choleric. That's my temperament. And my love. Your temperament, Flegmel. Yeah, Flegmel. Okay, so uh, I mean, I mean the way she looks, you can see it's Flegmel. <laughs> you know, so so yeah, because we understand that, and then we're able to work together in order to keep you know ourselves connected and continue to uh, do things that are different. Now, what about? You know, I just want to raise the issue about romance. Okay, uh, romance is excitement, romance is, is strong attraction, romance is a bond. Romance is something that helps you to just feel like this person is important in your life and you want to act, you want to walk, you want to do things. So, how has romance helped us in our marriage for the past 12 years? <laughs> what can I say? Oh my goodness. Put you on the spot. <laughs> you really put me on the spot. You can I'm gonna give massive, massive credit to you because like we mentioned our temperaments, like well, sometimes I can take the backward seat in terms of romance, but he's even when Maybe we are so busy, or everybody, we are either we are just busy with stuff that we tend to want to forget romance. He will just come in and do one thing, or act in one way, or say something that is that funny, or see how I'm green is because I'm remembering some things. So he he always keeps the relationship. Sometimes I even so he will just maybe buy something, a gift. So he's very spontaneous. I'm also, I'll praise myself too. I'm also spontaneous sometimes, but like I said, I give credit to you because you you really try to, this honest, honest talk or honest, honest from my heart, you really try to spice it up and ensure that the romance doesn't die. But I'm also doing things from my little corner, which obviously giving you gifts, Sometimes when he's really busy in the office, I'll just cook something that he really likes and I'll it, bring it to him. I'm just joking. He said, what did, what did, what did Sarah call Abraham? My Lord. <laughs> if he doesn't do or if he doesn't, if he's not pro proactive in our romantic life, it will not be where it is today. So, credit to you and similarly to different couples or couples that one person is very out there 
please carry on. The other, your spouse sees you and I'm sure he or she will definitely reciprocate. Don't feel that, oh, it's only me, it's only me. Because sometimes it might feel like that, but look at the long-term goal that you're keeping this relationship alive and your, your spouse will in turn appreciate that because, like I said, if it's in you to do it, go on, do it. Then the other spouse is seen and even if the person doesn't, it's not showing you the way you're doing it, but your spouse is also learning and say, oh, she did this for me, he did that for me. I would even try more than I would normally do, do to basically act the way you're acting or bringing romance, basically. You're putting me on the spot. I'm just trying to... <laughs> I, I don't know. I was told that my thing is echoing, but I don't know why. Mm. I'm really sorry. I've tried to fix it, but um, it's yeah. still happening. But guys, forgive me, please. So you're right. You're right in the sense that, you know, and this is what I always say that men, uh, it's not that the woman is not going to also be proactive. It's not that the woman is not going to do mm -hmm. what she is. sexist, but most times, men are good drivers for romance, honestly, like 80% or 90% of the time. So, basically, sorry, interrupted you. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, so it's, it's very important that, you know, as men, we always do whatever we can. Because I, I don't always think that men, when they say being the head or trying to lord over the woman, it's not just in the bedroom, okay? Uh, you have to be head everywhere. Right, you need to lead, you need to make sure that because I mean me personally, like yourself, we don't want any boring marriage. Okay. We don't want a boring marriage. We don't want an unexciting marriage. We want a marriage that is exciting. We want a marriage that both of us will enjoy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even as much as I am trying as much as I can to keep everything on fire and lead. And then I also have a spouse that understand the effort and also join me. And then both of us now are creating this beautiful place because we, we want our marriage to be a, a slice of heaven. We want a, a piece of heaven. We want that fullness, we want that excitement, we want that romance, we want that, that thing that keeps us excited, happy, and looking forward to being with one another. So 12 years into the marriage, into the relationship, and I can tell you, she, she has been... Wow, a, 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 a backbone to me, you know. Uh, her temperament has really complemented my sanguine and choleric nature, her phlegmatic nature has really blended so much. It has really helped us to work together and to actually see our marriage thrive and be better all the time. So what I always say to those that are still struggling to be connected, I think you need to be intentional about it, all right? And you need to make up your mind to stay low I will not want my marriage to just be like like any other marriage. Mm -hmm. I want to create it. I want to build it. And I want to make it work. So because we've been doing this thing over and over again in our marriage and our relationship now, we have come to a point whereby it's almost like um, we're so used to it, but we're still not taking it for granted. <laughs> We're not taking it for granted because we believe that we want this relationship to continue to move forward, to continue to be exciting. Now, I just want you to just say one or two romantic gestures that, you know, you know, that just, you know, gets me just like that. You or what you did. Um, I think the last one, we you just said, oh, I think let's just go to Plymouth. Is it Plymouth we went to? We went to do all the activities. Oh my goodness. I yeah. we, we really enjoyed it. And we were just out of the blue. We were like, hmm, let's do something interesting. Let's do something interesting. And it was just a weekend away, which was good. So you don't need two weeks, two months, one year to to spice up your relationship. So we did a getaway. And we want most times when we travel. We just go like between both of us. We just go, but I think we wanted the children to also participate. But we still had our own couples time when they were resting, so it was really good. So that's one of the recent gestures. What about the daily ones in the house? Yeah, daily ones. You obviously help out. <laughs> <laughs> Your praises. Yes, you help out. <laughs> 
with this lockdown and all, we work at home, so we always negotiate. We're like, oh, I have nine o'clock meeting. So, okay, I'm going to drop. Oh, I have three o'clock meeting. Okay, I'll pick you drop. So, it's a norm. So, when I hear when either fathers, most times I, what I've heard is fathers, or fathers are not helping out, and who it's, it sounds strange to me because, yeah, how we, we run our home, we help each other in times of needs, which is very good. But unfortunately, it's common. You see some women either struggling or some men as well. So that it's not be like it's just women. So women really, really struggling. And when you say, why can't you? Oh, he's not going to do it or she's not going to do it. So I have to struggle. And it's like, hmm, it's strange. It is a good thing because it's not happening here. And I pray God will continue to help us. Exactly. And also to help all those that might be struggling out there, you know, it's good to be real, it's good to be practical, and it's good to be supportive and to ensure that your relationship grows and get better and continue to be stronger and stronger. Now, the other one I wanted to mention before we're going to discussing about our conference is on the area of spending time together. Is that something that you really, really like? I really like that. I like I like talking, as you know. <laughs> so, so we just say, just let's just let's just keep talking. So try as much as you can to spend time together, and still going back to work. Sometimes it's also very busy. Maybe you're downstairs. I'm upstairs, but. Being proactive, sometimes we do it, isn't it? We call ourselves what before video call. <laughs> because it's not your video, I can't go down where you are. And we do a video call, we talk, and yeah, we just, we really try to spend time together because it's important. Sometimes you just be on your own and you forget that you're in, actually in a relationship when you're soaked in with work or soaked in with the, whatever you're doing, but being proactive to talk, to cook together, to laugh together, to joke, I think it's very good. And we're also, we, we keep learning, don't we? we yeah, keep absolutely. Learning. Uh, we keep learning. Absolutely. Now, I also want to just see, though, know, uh, this area of spending time because, you know, as you are in a relationship, a lot of time you are so busy with work, with so many things, business, school, and all that. And if you're not careful, you might be so surprised that you don't spend a lot of time together. Remember at the beginning, you guys, you know, wow, you want to see this person. <laughs> you want to talk to this person. You go out. You do a lot of things together. But as time goes on in the relationship, you realize that you're drifting apart. And the moment you are drifting apart, the connection is no longer there. So well, I'm also going to mention something about that I've also helped us. And I want you to say this. I want you to talk about the third way on how we resolve conflicts. <laughs> tell, them, tell them how we resolve our own conflict. Because conflict, conflict is a, is, is a reality, right? <laughs> so talk about the third way. Let, let my audience hear. Let me keep quiet. Yes, yes. One of the things that helped us is also we learn it. Remember when we went for went to no not went for went to Oxford for that couples conference for the family yeah. conference yeah. and Jane Hill, which is one of the speakers of the twenty twelve of this uh the, the the current couples connect conference twenty eight, which we're going to talk about. She really spoke about she spoke about the third way how to resolve conflict, and it resonated to both of us because we were just talking about it even as we were driving back. So you might have your own way, I'll have my own way, and both my same right in our own eyes. But to resolve the conflict, we'll take an element from your side, an element from my side, then we'll create a third way. And that has really helped us to resolve conflict when we have differences in opinions or differences in actions we need to take. And like I said, it's because of learning. We're trying to learn, try to improve our marriage. And we went to that conference and they extensively spoke about it. 
which I'm grateful for. So, viewers, keep learning. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yes, exactly. Because people see things from different lenses. People see things from different perspectives. And it's important to look at your other audience, uh, your other spouse as well, your other person on the other side. Put yourself in their shoe. Now, I only want to give a, a practical example because the Corpus Connect Conference is coming and we are debating on how to take the video because she's going to sing. Okay, it almost caused conflict because she she wanted to use the mobile phone and I wanted to use the main camera. <laughs> so at the end of the day, so she said, no, she the mobile phone is great because she uses it for, you know, the church videos and the choir stuff. And it was really great. But I said, look, this is this is much better. So at the end of the day, we said, okay, you know what? Let's do the video with the main camera. And then let's do the video with the mobile phone. And then we're going to compare the whichever one that is great and amazing, then we take it. So that was the third way. No my way, no how way, the third way. So at the end, at the end, which one was best? I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. <laughs> so at the end, the camera one was better. Then yesterday. Yesterday, we wanted to, I think, downstairs to chill, okay? Wanted to chill downstairs and all that. I wanted us to be downstairs in the living room. You said, no, you wanted to go up and cuddle up and all that. And they said, oh, why not? But I said, okay, you know what? I just go upstairs. So eventually, the third way is that we went upstairs because it's better there. The bed is there. I can always sleep and just, you know, instead of coming downstairs, our house is like three floors. So, look, misunderstandings and happens all the time. So you understanding that you need to find a way to be flexible in your approach and to be flexible the way you act with each other, it will go a long way to help you guys to do things differently. Otherwise, you continue to have challenges because yes. the reality of offense is there. All right? So my viewers, these are some of the things we do to keep ourselves connected and we are real and practical with you. So now we're going to talk about the Couples Connect Conference. Okay, I I'm going to... Before you go on to that... Yeah, yes, please. Does, and couples or people in a relationship recognize that you're not opponents in a battle. You're there for each other. So people bringing out their own opinions is not to... Will I say create war between you? It's just what the person is. The person is thinking in that perspective. So have that in mind. Then you know that any conflict that occurs is not particularly to just create war or create trouble. Yep, that's me. Absolutely. So just know that you are not an opponent. You are not fighting. You are not enemies. You are you are one thing. Okay, so let's just talk about the Couples Connect Conference. Okay, let's talk about the Couples Connect Conference. So as you can see on the screen, okay, that is the Couples Connect Conference of 2020. And this will be happening next week, Saturday on the 28th of uh, November. So it's really an amazing conference that is catered both for the young, the young adults, uh, single parents, engaged persons, newlyweds, honeymooners, and also for the married, obviously, and also for the widows, the separated, the divorced, and the widowers. So everybody has got something to gain from this conference. And I just want to encourage you to go to the website because the reason why we're doing this is because is this period. And we know that many people have their own unique challenges, their own unique difficulties. But this program is designed in such a way that it will impart your marriage. It will impart your relationship. It will help you to position yourself in a better way in order to get the best out of your marriage. So Conference. this conference is tailored to meet specific needs and to help you as well to be better. Because the theme of this conference is, is love enough to make marriage work. Well, I don't want to say much on that, but rather you're going to find out. And we're doing a promo at the moment whereby you can use CCC, Triple C 2020 as a code to have a further 30% discount to the 25th of November 
which is next week. And I can tell you, it's going to be an amazing, amazing section, amazing time. And people are buying things for Christmas now. People are spending money on different things. But one of the things I found out is people are not proactive to invest in their marriage and their relationships. Realizing that that is something that will give you even more happiness, more joy, more fulfillment, and that will keep you stable, will help you to also achieve even more things. So, hog on to the website, Conference, and so much details are there, which I don't want to go through or bore you here, but you've got a mobile phone, you've got a tablet, a desktop, just go to www.corpuscornetconference.com and see what is happening there and the kind of speakers that we're going to be bringing there and those that are going to bring a lot of changes and a lot of transformation. So I'm just going to let my um, missus at the moment to say something about it. You said it all. You said it all. The one we had 2019 was amazing. And I can assure you guys, this one will also blow your mind. So please, please book your ticket. Invest in your marriage. And what has helped us these 12 years is also investing, listening to speakers, going to conferences, um, reading books, because no man is an island and you don't know it all. You know, I would opportunity to go on to a, a, a health program. And I felt I knew everything about my body. But it shocked me to know that, no, you don't know it all. You keep learning and learning until you're old and gray. So guys, take it as an investment. Book your ticket on the 28th of November and I guarantee you, you won't regret it. You you enjoy the conference for sure. If you so, if you look at the screen at the moment, I've just put up the flyer, mm -hmm. and you can see the incredible speakers that we have all lined up. You know, to give you the best of the finest. And it's an interesting thing about all participants as well. There's going to be prize edition. Uh, someone is going to win $200 with a Michelin restaurant, fully paid for anywhere in the world that they might be, have a second winner and a third winner as well. So just see this as an investment into your relationship, investment to your marriage, that you want something better, you want something different. Go onto the website and also, look, share this. Share it with your friends. Share this with your colleagues. Share this with you know anyone that you are you are praying and hoping that they will come to understand what marriage is all about and how to prepare to get there and also how to remain connected this will be happening on the 28th of november we have just one week to go and i can tell you you'll be amazed the impact this is gonna have in your relationship let me just show you the speakers we had last year right as you can see this was 2019 speakers monitoring your marriage in a modern world we had John Gray, we have Pastor Ago from Jesus House, we had um, Dr. Guy Chapman, we have Shanti Ferdinand, and um, incredible speakers that came to challenge us and really, really empowered our relationship. And this year is not going to be an exception. I tell you now, the only way to find out is showing you know, up strong, getting your ticket, sharing this with your friends, and help somebody out there to be part of this incredible event. Because if you do, you will not remain the same. Now, before I go, I would like to give you a gift. Okay? And that's the gift. Right? The gift is five ways you are destroying your marriage daily and what you can do to stop it. So this is the gift. You will go to this website, www.chindachinda.com. Okay? www.chindachinda.com. And I would like you to... Download this. Yeah. Download this. It's very practical. You're going to feel something. You're going to write things down. Um, it's going to challenge you. I can tell you right now, the, the book is very powerful, um, but it's, it's something that will make you start thinking seriously about your relationship now and the one you're going to have in the future. So this is the parting gift from me and my lovely wife for having this section today. Go to www. 
chinda.chinda.com and you'll be able to download this book for free. Exciting. Thank you so much. Now, I just want to thank all those that have been able to join us from everywhere. Tulani, thank you so much. We're grateful. Can you guys give us some hearts? Okay. If this has been beneficial to you, give us some hearts and tell us, you know, what resonated with you as well. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can do that there. If you're on community, if you're on married life community, you can do that there. And if you want us to do more like this, if you want me and my love, to come up and be very practical with you once in a while. <laughs> She's doing like that. <laughs> so you better vote now. <laughs> you better vote now by commenting what you want us to do going forward because I'm happy to share this platform with her today. And I thank all those that have joined us and those that have been part of this today. Let me just ask my love, Please, what's your parting word about the conference and also about being a connected spouse? Yeah, I think I've said it all in terms of the conference. And yes, looking forward to it. Okay. So what's your encouragement about connected couple then? <laughs> Remain connected. <laughs> Remain connected and do all you can to, if it means reading books, um, going to conferences, but be proactive because relationship is one of the things that, I think they did a survey and they found out that people that are in healthy relationship live longer. So yeah, having good relationships. Wow, that's profound. If you want to live long, be in a healthy relationship and remain connected with your spouse. So we have spoken about this topic today, the secret of a connected couple. And we have used this to invite you to the Couples Connect Conference taking place. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. And we're just going to wrap this up by just looking at a video that talks about what married life management does. Speak to you guys soon and have a lovely evening.